Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is part five on the LS swap in this 1976 C3 Corvette. Go ahead and click on the playlist. It'll get you up to speed as far as what has uh, transpired up to this point. So in the last video, we talked about the installation of the LS3 pump and the front accessory drive. Um, so on this video, it's not gonna be a, like a huge update. It's just a culmination of a lot of little things that needed to get done before the engine goes into the car. So one of the things I did was I painted the block and we just used some degreaser and some brake clean and some elbow grease to clean up the block. And then I just hit it with some acid dash primer and some VHT ceramic paint that's resistant to, I think a thousand degrees and it's also resistant uh, to chemicals. So using that, I think it's a uh, good solution um, for uh, what I was trying to do. Another thing I did was we had a broken stud in the head. So we went ahead and removed that. And then one of the things that we talked about in the last video was the routing of the existing truck steam port. Uh, before um, the, the port actually ran into the intake of the LS6 intake. So all I did was um, I took a torch and I used an awl and I heated that up. You can see the discoloration in the pipe. And they, I basically just tweaked it a little bit more. And so now I just have this uh, tube on there just for visual purposes. So now we have options as far as where we can uh, route the uh, steam port line. We, I can either mount it, I can either tap into the, into the water pump, route it right in there. I can route it to my, my uh, expansion tank like Chevy did. Or if I wanna route it to my upper radiator hose, and route right to there, I can. So at this point, I have options. So another thing we did was we went ahead and uh, removed the two outlets from the water pump because if you're working on a C3 and you're doing this, there is a known interference issue with the upper control arm. So those outlets need to be removed. So another thing that I'm gonna have to do is I have to shave this pad down so it's flush with the surface to give me more clearance by the upper control arm. And then once this is milled down, well, I will then uh, tap it and plug it and then weld it. And then we're gonna go ahead and mount two um, outlets, one up here and one probably around here for to basically redirect water to the heater hoses for the heater core. So another thing we have to do is we have to remove this neck because this is another known interference issue. So we have to remove the angled neck and, and replace it with a straight one. So not that big of a deal. Another thing we did was I removed the oil filler extension off the uh, valve cover because it was cracked, it was leaking. And if you didn't, if you didn't know, the actually cap will actually screw into the valve cover. There's really no need for that extension. So I opted to remove it. And as you can see, the stock coils will fit on it with no interference. So that's another thing I did. So as far as removing the two uh, outlets uh, from the water pump, so there they are right there. They're um, pressed in and then they're held in with uh, green Loctite, which is a liquid. So they're there, right there. And then all I did was I just used a map torch to heat them up. And then I just used my uh, slide hammer and all it is is vice grips with a threaded rod in it and a handle that's on the back of it. And they just clamped on it. And after I heated it up, I just pulled them out. It probably took about five minutes to do both of them. And they came out pretty easy. So as far as the, the uh, steam vent or the steam port, again, all I did was hook up the, uh, we'll heat up the, the tube. And then I use this all to support the tube and bend it. And again, it went nice and slow, so I didn't stress it and it came out. So as far as the uh, getting the stud out, I use this uh, titanium MIG 140 welder. And again, this, uh, this welder isn't mine, it's actually my buddy Mike's. So I don't do a ton, ton of welding. So whenever I do have to do any welding, I'll just grab his and I'll, I'll use it. So don't make fun of my welding, so. <laughs> So here's a stud, right? Here it is. It's in my hand. And all I did was I used a method that other people have used. Um, I just welded a washer to the stud first, and then I welded the nut to the washer. And I used my finest booger welding skills 
and I welded that nut, and yeah, you know what? It looks like shit, but it's in my hand. It worked, so as ugly as this thing is, and I, I agree, I'm not a welder. I cannot weld for shit just because I don't spend that much time on it, and this is the culmination of welding every six months. So, and that, and I'm using flux core, so I'm not using gas. So, but re regardless, it's out, it's on the bench. It's not in the, it's in the head. So as ugly as it is, mission accomplished, I don't care. So it's good. So, all right. So at this point, what I want to do next is I'm actually waiting for some gaskets to come in. And then once those come in, I'm going to kind of install those. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to install the starter and then I'm going to put a battery on it and then we're going to prime it and I want to make sure we're going to, and then we're going to roll the, uh, the engine over yeah, using the starter. And I want to make sure that we have good oil pressure and I don't have any issues with a pickup tube going into the, uh, the oil pump. I want to verify oil pressure while it's on the stand before we put it in there and then we'll go from there. So. All right, if there's any thoughts, questions, concerns, go leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.